Hello and welcome to today's webinar, What's New in SDL Trade Insights 9.1. My name's Kate and I'll be your host today. Today's speakers are Arno, who's a Senior Product Manager for SDL, and Alberto Andrade, who's the Vice President Solution Consulting at SDL. Um, we expect today's webinar to probably last around 30 minutes. 30 minutes. If you do have any questions throughout the webinar, could you please put them in the Q&A box, which is in the Ask a Question tab, and we'll be sure to follow up with you. I'll now pass you over to Alberto to begin the presentation. Thank you very much, Kate. My name is Alberto Andrade, and I'm based out of uh, New York City. So at first, you know, before we get into uh, what is new in 9.1, uh, I understand that a lot of our customers may not be in version 9.0 and ready to upgrade. So I wanted to go back and show and share with you a few of the features that we have added into Tridian Sites since 2013. So you see in this slide, which may be a little busy, but I'll leave it out there and I'll just pick a few of the features that we have added since and I'll add a little description to each one of those. Adaptive blueprinting, where you can actually promote and demote blueprint nodes. You now have the ability to preview pages from uh, Content Explorer. So if you're actually browsing a specific page within the Explorer, you can just right click or use one of the icons to actually preview that uh, within the site. You have a collaborative workflow in context translation review, uh, which means when you actually send a piece of content from within Tridian to be translated, you're able to actually preview the translation prior to accepting it back into the repository. So those are features that a lot of our customers have been asking us to, uh, to add, and we have added since 2013. Other ones that you can see on the right-hand side, you know, single sign-on, Predefined regions, so it can actually define regions within a page, and you can actually put constraints into it, so an end user does not, uh, does not get overly exuberant with design and puts too much content, or different types of content that are not accepted into that page. One other thing that we have added was the ability to now consolidate content coming from our other product, uh, Tridium Docs, into the same delivery stack as Tridian sites, you know, allowing you to have content mashups as part of the same uh, delivery stack. And of course, a few other additions to the, that you can see here, and those slides will be shared later on. On the other side, there are a lot of technical differences, but I'm not going to uh, go through any details on this one because, um, you know, the, the only one that I would call attention to on the right hand side is the ability to do rolling, you know, upgrades. So you'll be able to actually do rolling upgrades into your whole delivery stack, you know, which makes it a lot easier to update, upgrade your, your environment. Now, moving forward, if you actually, you know, look back at the features that we have added, you know, we are concentrating on scalability, flexibility, and omni-channel delivery of content. So if I had to pick, you know, a few of those uh, features that we have added since 2013, I will concentrate on the left-hand side content management uh, with the adaptive blueprinting, the ability to promote and demote content um, within the blueprinting structure, uh, content mashups, which I mentioned uh, previously, and the regions that we have added to the page. On the content delivery side, you see that um, the unified delivery platform that we call DXD, the ability to, que to query all of the content in the repository using GraphQL, allowing you for any uh, delivery endpoint, and of course the microservices with Docker container to make it very easy for you to scale. Now, if I move on to the next slide and you look into the market evolution in the past few years, you will see that it's an ever-changing uh, environment. This is a snapshot of the MarkTech, you know, market technology landscape as of April 2019 with 7,040 different vendors. So our customers are really, you know, trying to add or remove uh, different technologies into their stack. But one thing that is very important to them as they have communicated to us is the ability to have 
the content. So you see on the lower left-hand side, you know, that's where web content or content in general lives. So as you plug in different pieces of technology, whichever uh, choice you make, our goal is to allow you for freedom of technology choices. And that's where we're concentrating on, creating an open platform to allow you to actually integrate with any technology solution that your enterprise choosing. So uh, freedom of technology selection is actually our goal moving forward. And hopefully as you uh, go through the rest of this presentation, you will see you know, the value in opening up your content platform uh, to allow for such integrations. With that, I would like to pass the baton over to Arno, who will take you through all of the different uh, new features that we have added in 9.1. Thank you, Alberto, for that introduction. Uh, welcome, everyone. Um, I wanted to start on with the 3D integration framework. Um, so Gartner predicts that in the future, marketing will be the primary driver of company, gro company growth. Uh, and that markets will actually spend more on IT than the IT director actually did in 2017. Um, so, so this is a clear trend, and we've already seen a massive increase in the use of digital marketing tools. And as uh, Alberto already mentioned, um, there are very uh, uh, there's a very diverse landscape of, of uh, marketing tools uh, uh, out there. So. With SDL3 Insights 9.1, um, organizations can now extend their CMS capabilities by easily integrating it with the rest of the existing marketing tool sets uh, using the, uh, the 3D and integration framework. This will enable marketers to deliver on their own omnichannel strategies and the integrated marketing communications. So there's no need to reinvest in new marketing tools, but you can actually leverage the technology stack that already exists in the enterprise. So this means that making uh, informed jo choices using customer insights and deliver uh, better customer experiences, achieve oper operational efficiencies across platforms and teams, and uh, taking at full advantage of the company-wide uh, corporate assets is now possible. So a couple of benefits that that will uh, bring are listed here. So on the business agility, um, the the it's, it's easy to add touch points or, or channels as new technology emerges. Um, content consistency, deliver consistent content across channels, uh, reinforcing the brand uh, that you're promoting. Uh, so no copy-paste of, of content across repositories anymore. Um, and on the increased customer engagement, uh, improving customer engagement by delivering exactly the right information to the right customer in the right channel which is very important, of course. Um, on the productivity, it's easy to, to access uh, and manage relevant content across repositories from various departments uh, to, to efficiently and reuse, use and reuse content that otherwise actually would be locked in different repositories. Um, and that would deliver you an integrated marketing environment uh, to personalize marketing campaigns uh, by combining, combining content from SDL 3D sites with well, multiple content repositories and making informed choices uh, from very data, data sources. I'm sorry. So, the um, so integrating your marketing tools is is um, important here, and and that will allow you to create highly optimized and personalized experience. So the Connector framework or the integration framework and its connectors uh, simplify this by enabling you to actually quickly connect with a DAM, a CRM, ERP, marketing automation, commerce, or whatever uh, technology you, you prefer um, uh, to, to, to integrate with those. So um, what's essential here as well is that what we wanted to do is um, Ac allow you access uh, to the external data that's not in 3D Insights, but you can use it both on the content manager side as well as the content delivery side um, uh, through, through uh, connecting to that external repository by building a connector only once, either in Java, C Sharp, or whatever you prefer there, um, but that will be used both on the delivery side and the 
uh, altering site um, um, and, and will be deployed in an automated fashion. So on the connectors, we have um, enabled uh, a couple of different um, use cases here, and I wanted to start out with the uh, connectors for multimedia. So multimedia connectors allow you to integrate with different multimedia sources, uh, digital asset management systems, for instance, um, and those uh, SGL3 Insights can then be considered the central content hub where all your content can be accessed and orchestrated to create rich multimedia-enabled digital experiences. Uh, so key benefits here uh, are no duplication of assets. You can keep them in, uh, in the DAM system. You can use them on the authoring site to uh, embed them on your pages or just uh, create a, a link to those uh, assets and then reference them basically on the delivery site. So you don't even have to publish them through the content management system. You can just um, make them available on the delivery site, for instance, through a CDM. So if you look at the benefits there, uh, single source to multimedia assets. So you will have access to all your assets in the DAM system. Uh, uh, so we'll have uh, an enterprise single source of truth through your, through your, uh, for your multimedia assets. Um, and, and some of the uh, capabilities that we've uh, enabled here are previewing of multimedia content, um, um, tagging, uh, metadata tagging, uh, searching, and those kind of things that are important for, uh, uh, for finding the right content, obviously. Then an, another um, connector, uh, connectivity uh, uh, piece that we've added here is uh, on the commerce side. So we've also um, made it possible to uh, create connectors for commerce. And a commerce basically is an, um, it needs to be an integral part of the overall customer experience nowadays. So successful commerce now relies on blending engaging marketing content uh, that comes from three insights with product content, which could come from uh, other systems like the uh, PIM systems or uh, uh, yeah, commerce uh, system that is uh, e-commerce system that is, that is providing all of the capabilities around uh, the transactional commerce uh, uh, part. So due to the siloed nature of web content and product information and commerce systems, creating and managing these blended experiences used to be uh, very difficult, time consuming and expensive. Uh, but now with these connectors, we allow you to have direct access to those commerce systems, um, um, which allows you to dynamic render, uh, dynamically render those product pages, uh, create blended pages, so you, you mash up your marketing content and uh, your uh, product information content, and you don't have a separate, uh, the need for a separate commerce uh, site anymore. Um, and it allows you to use uh, our... Uh, uh, what you see is what you get editing uh, capabilities. So to do, um, yeah, have inline editing control, basically. And benefits here are leading to, uh, well, improved conversions, uh, realizing new digital revenue streams. If you didn't have a, a web presence, a commerce uh, presence, I, I should say, yet, um, the ease of experience management, uh, management here uh, and, and blending those management, uh, sorry, inspirational and commerce experiences. So the, the, the marketing content with those uh, transactional uh, commerce uh, capabilities here, um, which all can be um, delivered in a responsive and adaptive uh, uh, environment as well, for instance, for, for mobile uh, uh, um, devices. And then lastly, looking at the uh, connector for CRM. So the connector for CRM allows for the creation of lead generation forms and personalization of experiences based on uh, the customer data uh, that is stored in the, uh, the customer relationship management system. Um, 
so you can build personalized and targeted experiences, streamline campaigns uh, and marketing efforts, um, improve the self-service and customer experience, um, and, and all of that by uh, just having direct access to the CRM fields um, on the authoring site to create online forms uh, that then can be uh, delivered on the delivery site to capture um, the, 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 the leads and, uh, and store that back into the CRM system. Um, and you can, you can apply all of that data uh, to um, personalize basically the, uh, the web experience for the users as well. And oh, before I actually jump to this one, uh, I just wanted to reiterate that for um, these connectors we have um, already uh, the connector for multimedia, we have a binder connector available already in the App Store. We are actively developing a Primo connector as well, uh, which should be released uh, in the near future. On the um, Commerce, we have a SAP Commerce Cloud connector available now as well, uh, as well as for the CRM. A Salesforce CRM connector. So these these are all available through um, through SDL. We can we can provide details uh, through the account management or uh, any any other um, relationship that you have with with SDL. You can you can get more information there. All right. So let me move on to a short glimpse into the near future because this is. Um, something that we wanted to share with you already, um, which is very exciting, uh, a thing that we're doing today, and that's uh, building a modernized user experience. So the main ob objectives are to create a new future-proof and intuitive user interface that will uh, improve the usability and increase the editorial productivity for, uh, for the users. So what you see here is an example of the in-context editing experience, uh, which has been improved to now support single-page applications as well. Um, and this is, this is the in-development version of, uh, uh, of what it is today. So we'll, we'll make some tweaks and changes to what it looks like here, um, but it will give you a nice uh, glimpse into what, uh, uh, yeah, what we're working on today. Um, and definitely what, what's uh, worthy noting here is that we want to give the user more information about where this content, how this content is being used on the page, uh, where where it's being published to in this specific example, for instance, uh, and give more more information and more, more insights into what um, um, yeah what how the content is being used or, or what will happen if you make changes to the specific content um, for instance if it's being localized here or maybe it's being shared in in, in different uh, blueprint context on this example um, this is a form view where the uh, uh, the content editing will will actually showing an improved user experience here with a list of fields on the left side that the user can navigate through, uh, and an improved rich text editing experience on the right, um, with for for example better table editing and page from word support. Um, so all of all of this is uh, taking into account feedback that we're getting through uh, SDL IDs um, on the community.sdl.com uh, site. So so also go there to uh, vote on. Um, IDs that you think are interesting, um, but also these are these are all um, concepts that we've tested with uh, uh, with some of our customers, and we're getting feedback and actively taking feedback on uh, on on in development uh, um, parts of the user interface here. And lastly, I have this overview here, where um, in this example you can see the content navigation overview that. Uh, that reacts promptly on selection and changes, uh, which is today crucial in enhancing the user experience. Um, and also here you can see on the right um, a new way of presenting um, information about the uh, about the selected item, uh, which is which is 
well, allowing you to for, for better productivity, for instance, because you don't have to open up the item anymore to see, uh, w well, the basic properties of the item. Uh, but we're also thinking about um, allowing you to start editing, um, well, uh, from from these kind of uh, uh, editing boxes here, property boxes on the right. So there's there's a lot of changes coming, uh, and I think I'm really excited to see what's uh, what's up uh, after. The 9.1 release, um, but this is uh, this is something that uh, we're looking to uh, to incorporate in the next year uh, in in STL trading sites 9.5. So Alberto, I would like to hand it over to you. Well, thank you very much, Arno. So as you can see, there's some very exciting new features that we have added to this release, some that will help you uh, your business. Uh, perform and be a little bit more open. So if we can just recap the benefits of upgrading, you will see that obviously proven technology, something that you already know and trust with functional upgrades, technical cap capabilities, and a lot of ease of use introduced in this latest release. A secure cloud offering with CAAS, CMS, and DX plus uh, AAS, okay, all ISO uh, 27001 certified, SOC 2 type 2 compliant. Of course, that may not mean an awful lot to a lot of people. Uh, improve business agility. So you see that we're moving towards the you know, advanced, advanced headless offering, allowing you to query any of your content from any uh, endpoint, and our integration framework to make the platform as open as you require it to be with a dynamic experience delivery. Okay. So with the rolling upgrades, you'll be able to actually upgrade uh, your, uh, your environment uh, with a lot more ease. So uh, all of this information will be available. I'll, sh I'll share some of the, the, the websites. But what's next, right? So we have posted and we will post this presentation uh, within our website. I'm just trying to forward that. So you can find that uh, more information at sdl.com forward slash tridian dash dx for digital experience, uh, sdl.com forward slash tridian dash sites, and in our community <laughs> at community.sdl.com. I wanted to see what's uh... You can actually contact your account manager as well, or just go into sdl.com forward slash contact to find the, uh, the nearest um, office, office numbers. Okay, we have uh, a new uh, training curriculum available as well, and uh, that will be posted, and you see uh, here what the course titles are. I would also like to invite you all to some very exciting events that we have coming up. Uh, we, uh, we have our yearly conference uh, which we call SDL Connect, coming up October 9th to the 10th in Burlingame, California, you know, right south of uh, San Francisco by the airport. This is a great opportunity for you to actually interact with existing customers, uh, prospects, and the SDL staff. So it's a great networking event, and uh, I would encourage you uh, to register uh, for it. It's, you know, it's, uh, I, I've been there uh, for about 10 years, and it's always an exciting, exciting event. If you are on the other side of the pond, okay, we also have our Tridian Development Summit 2019, or TDS as we call, happening in November 5th to November 6th. Okay, in Amsterdam, and you can also um, you you will find the sign up link uh, once we post uh, the this presentation online. Without any more, um, I would like to open uh, the floor to any questions uh, that the audience may have for me or for Arno. Yes, I will take the questions, Alberta. All right, so I see one question about the connectors. Uh, for instance, about what uh, connectors are available to dams uh, and other systems, um, and, and are they available out of the box, or do they need to be built on a custom basis? Um, so I, I mentioned the connectors that are there uh, today. So we have commercially available the um, SubCommerce Cloud and the Salesforce CRM connector. 
um, the uh, Primo connector will be, so that's a DAM connector, will be available soon. Um, and the binder uh, connector is already freely available through the SDL App Store. Um, other connectors, if required, uh, can be built on request, um, and you can contact your account representative for that uh, to, uh, uh, to get that requested. And I'm waiting for some other questions from the audience as they come in. If you do have any questions, please put them in the Q&A box, which is in the Ask a Question tab. So we can give it another minute, and otherwise, uh, Kate, um, it's up to you to, to close off. All right, so there's a um, question about the uh, single page application support for um, the in-context editing uh, part. This is going to be part of the next release in uh, 2020. So we're we're working on um, on a completely new user interface. So both the form view and the in context editing experience will be merged into one new user interface. Uh, and this will out out of the box from that first release uh, start to um, uh, support single-page applications um, and in in context editing for single-page applications. So um, another question I see here is about rolling upgrades and do we have that, do we have to be on the last version of site? So rolling upgrades will work from, um, let me think, so as of 8.5 to 9 and 9 to 9.1. So there's always a rolling upgrade supported from uh, the previous version to the last version. So that's hopefully answering um, that question. And about the release date for 9.5, so we're looking into uh, the first half of next year to, to release uh, this, this new user interface, uh, as well as some additional um, capabilities that, that we're planning to do for 9.5. I will have a roadmap session at Connect, as well as TDS, so the, the two events that uh, Alberto just mentioned to, uh, to go into more details what's, what's in 9.5, uh, as well as uh, uh, timelines related to that. And I think okay, that's yeah, I think. okay. Thank you. Yeah, okay. So um, thanks, Alberto and Arno, for presenting today, and thanks for all the questions that came in. Um, thanks for attending today's webinar. The attachments and links section on this webinar actually has those links that um, Alberto mentioned earlier. So um, please look at those. Uh, the recording, recording will be available here on Bright Talk straight after the webinar, but also send a copy to everyone who's registered. We hope you found today's session useful, and we look forward to seeing you again on one of our next webinars. Have a great rest of the day. Thanks, everybody.